What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13 beta 4 to registered developers two weeks after the original release of beta 3 and one week after the re-release of developer beta 3 which is also the same day that the public beta 2 was released. And ironically today is also National Emoji Day but of course we aren't going to be getting any of the new emojis just yet. So of course in this video we're going to be discussing everything new in iOS 13 developer beta 4, all the new changes and features which there are a lot. We're also going to talk about the performance, the battery life, connectivity, and also a big security bug that has thankfully been patched here in beta 4. So let's not waste any time. I did install iOS 13 beta 4 on my iPhone 10R, my iPhone 6S, and my iPad Pro. You can see here the size of the update came in. It varied from device to device, but you can see here 651.2 megabytes on my iPhone 10R. It was a little bit bigger on my iPad Pro. It was about a gigabyte, but of course that size will vary for you. Let's check out the build number now. If we go ahead over to settings general about, you can see the build number right there. It is 17A5534F. And then if we scroll down a little bit inside of about, you can see the first change here in the modem firmware. We do have a new modem firmware update. So it went from 1.52.04 to 1.53.02. So if you were having any kind of connectivity issues or anything like that on previous versions of iOS 13, those may be fixed here with that new modem firmware update. All right, so now let's talk about some of the other new features and changes here in iOS 13 beta 4. And the first one is a big one, and that is that 3D Touch is back once again on iOS 13 beta 4. So if I say again because we've said iOS 13 is back before, but it wasn't actually fully back. But now it's looking like it is actually back for real. So this is iPhone iPhone 8 right here on the left, iPhone 6S on the right, both have 3D touch, except for this one is on beta 4, this one is on beta 3. Check out when I 3D touch on the home screen on the app store. You can see I can keep holding down, and that means that 3D touch was just triggered there on the iPhone 6S, which is on beta 4, but until I let go here on beta 3, it doesn't show the quick menu option, which means that it's using a haptic touch or a long press instead of a pressure sensitive press like with 3D Touch. So you can see it's working now like expected as you all have known 3D Touch through the years now on beta 4. So that is a really big relief for a lot of people. I know a lot of people didn't even want to update to iOS 13 because of the issues with 3D Touch, but now it's looking like those are fully fixed now in beta 4. Now, not only is 3D Touch back in iOS 13 beta 4, but there's also a lot of changes to the 3D Touch menu. So if you go ahead and 3D Touch on something here, you can see the difference instantly. So this is beta 4 right here. This is beta 3. You can see we have a new option there that says rearrange apps. And when you go ahead and tap on that, you can see all it does is put your device, all your applications into wiggle mode. So you can go ahead and delete applications or move them around. So it's just another shortcut to go ahead and do that. But you'll also notice that the whole menu has changed. It looks a lot more refined. It looks a lot more simplified. The icons are smaller. The text is a little bit smaller. Just looks a lot more unified and just better than it did on any version of iOS. And you can see it's the same deal with the iPhone 10R. You can see that's what it looks like on the iPhone 10R there. Of course, we do have haptic touch on the iPhone 10R, so it is a little bit different. And you can also see we have more of the 3D touch like features available on the iPhone 10R as well. So we don't have to actually let go of the application to pull up the menu like we did here on beta 3 over here on the left. You can see we have to let go before we get the menu, but even on haptic touch devices, that is not the case anymore. Now, another major change in iOS 13 beta 4 is when we go into the settings, take a look at settings. Do you notice a difference between these two? This is beta 3, this is beta 4. Do you notice the difference? So it seems that the settings page is just a lot more refined and looks a lot better in my opinion. So you can see the icons are a little bit smaller here on the left hand side of the settings menu. And also it seems to be more padding in between each element like notifications, sounds, do not disturb, screen time. It seems to be more space in between those, which makes for a much better and cleaner looking settings panel, in my opinion. And if we go into the messages application, you will notice a difference in the voice messages icon right there. So in beta three, you can see the little microphone right there beside where you type in your message to send a voice message. But now in beta four, you can see that is the new icon. So it looks a little bit better than it did in beta three. So now inside of the mail application, we have a new and refined red animation. So when we go ahead and mark an email as red or unread, we now have a new animation for that. So over here on beta three on the left hand side, you can see we have it, this unread email right here. We go ahead and swipe over to make it red. You can see you have to swipe over and it disappears right away. But on iOS 13 beta four, if we swipe over all the way, you can see it doesn't go away until the animation is done. So it looks a lot more fluid, a lot better. You can see here it's the same for unread, 
versus on beta 3 it just shows up right away so a little bit more of a refined animation there with the red emails so if we go over to the widgets panel and go all the way down to the bottom you'll see that we now have a new edit button so instead of being circular like in beta 3 it's now more of a rounded rectangular button there for edit and if I bring over the iPad you can see it's the exact same on the iPad we do have that circular edit button down there at the bottom now and the whole widget panel on beta 4 just seems a lot more smooth and fluid on the iPad in my opinion than it did in beta 3. Now speaking of the iPad you can see here that the floating keyboard actually looks a lot more round and more refined than it did in beta 3 so it looks more like it actually belongs now instead of being squared off it's more rounded off it's still functional still works the same but it just looks a little bit better here in beta 4 on the iPads. And then also here in Safari you can tap and hold on a tab and you can see you can actually arrange the tabs by title and by website so that's really cool that's like something you can do on a desktop this does also work on iPhones so you can see here I have the same exact options on my iPhone 10R so pretty cool little feature there inside of Safari if we go into the App Store and go to the arcade tab down here we do also have a new little splash screen here and a new notify me button if you want to get notified when Apple Arcade gets released and speaking of the App Store one problem that a lot of people faced early on in the first you know three betas was that they could not download iOS 13 specific applications that they accidentally deleted so for instance if you deleted like the new reminders application you wouldn't be able to go into the App Store and re-download it but now you are able to you can see right there it shows up in search and you're also able to download it and install it perfectly fine whereas you could not before now another small change that I noticed here in iOS 13 beta 4 is that the little more icon doesn't have the red background anymore it's more of like a washed out like gradient look right there and when you go ahead and tap on it you can see you get more options now for some reason it shows all of your shortcuts here as well whereas it didn't on iOS 13 beta 3 so just a small change there inside of the music application so those are just some of the new features and changes here in iOS 13 beta 4 I'm sure there are others and I will be covering more in my follow-up videos but now let's talk about some of the bugs let's talk about the performance the battery life all that good stuff so one of the top bugs one of the most complained about things with iOS 13 has been the YouTube application now thankfully in iOS 13 beta 4 the YouTube application works perfectly fine it has not frozen up on me one time so I'm pretty sure that beta 4 and the latest updates from Google to the YouTube application on iOS have solved all of the issues which is a great thing because I'm sure most of you guys use the YouTube application a lot so if you're thinking about updating and you wanted to make sure that the YouTube application was fixed here's your confirmation the YouTube application is fixed no more freezing or glitching out for me and may do it sometimes for some of you but it has not happened to me one time since installing this update and I've also heard the same from others as well now another major bug that has been fixed here in iOS 13 beta 4 was the passwords and accounts bug so basically when you went ahead and tapped if you kept tapping on website and app passwords you were able to get in and see all passwords without using face ID or your passcode and I will demonstrate that for you here on beta 3 over here on the left hand side so you can see here on beta 3 we have website and app passwords and if we were to tap on that we would have to put in our touch ID or face ID if you are on a face ID device and you would not be able to get in but in beta 3 if you repeatedly kept tapping that you were going to be able to get in you actually are able to get in still to the passwords so you can see right there there we go I was able to get through that bypass the password and get straight in to the passwords for all of my websites right there but in beta 4 you can see that has been patched no matter how many times we do it it still does ask for face ID or touch ID so you will not be able to get into those website and app passwords and be able to see all of the passwords on the device or on file for that iCloud account so that is a great patch here in beta 4 obviously it did need to happen ASAP it's not really a huge security risk because you do have to get into the phone to begin with but still it is a pretty big vulnerability and I'm glad that it was patched here in beta 4. Now one bug that was actually introduced with beta 4 is in Safari and if you go ahead and tap and hold on a link you can see we can now no longer open up that link in a new tab so I'm not sure why that is that's one of my favorite things to do 3d touch or just press long on a link and open it up in a new tab and you can see now our options are limited here in beta 4 I'm hoping that does get fixed immediately with beta 5 but you can see that or even the public beta but you can see there 
that is a bug in beta 4. So also the mail badge icons were messed up in beta 3. It would actually show the wrong number of unread emails, but now in beta 4, it is showing up correctly. So I did notice this on beta 3 on my iPhone 10R where I do have a lot more emails, but that has been fixed and now shows the proper amount of unread emails. Now CarPlay did also have a lot of issues on beta 1 and beta 2, but beta 3 seemed to fix a lot of the issues related to CarPlay uh, and beta 4 I would imagine would help fix even more of those. So I don't have CarPlay to test it out, but if you do test it on beta four and let me know how it's working out for you. Now, another major bug that I saw people talking about with beta three was overheating. So some people's phones would just overheat. And one of the things I found on Reddit and through testing myself is if you don't want to have your phone overheat, turn off optimized battery charging. This is the feature that is new in iOS 13 that only charges your phone up to 80%. And if you turn that off, apparently that will completely prevent all of the overheating issues that some of you have been facing. So it's definitely worth trying out if you were having any kind of overheating issues on your iPhone. Now, as for the performance, the re-release of iOS 13 beta three did fix a lot of the performance issues that I had, but there were still some minor bugs and times where my phone would just kind of freeze up for a second especially like in settings and when I'm multitasking through applications it would definitely not be anything major it just be a very slight hiccup that I would notice but I've not had that at all so far in beta 4 beta 4 seems extremely fluid it almost makes me feel like I'm not on beta software right now it feels really good animations are super fast the app switcher is really fast, applications are fast. I've not noticed any kind of hiccups with the keyboard, whether that be the swipe keyboard or the regular keyboard, nothing at all so far. Even inside of the camera, a lot of times with the camera when I'd go back and forth and do things like this and go to portrait, and do the same, it would freeze up and lag, but none of that so far here in iOS 13 beta four. So I would go ahead and consider this a really good stability update from beta three. Now, when it comes to the battery life, battery life is also great. And beta three was actually an improvement over beta two. So I'm expecting beta four to be even more of an improvement over beta three. So I would expect the battery life to be really good here on beta four, especially now since we have better performance, we have less apps crashing, YouTube is performing a lot better. I just feel like the battery life will only get better. And me personally on my iPhone 10R, I was able to get at least seven hours of usage every single day without needing to charge. And battery life hasn't really been great on older devices like my iPhone 6S over here. Hasn't been tremendous, hasn't been bad, uh, but it's definitely not good. Uh, compared to newer phones like the iPhone, even the iPhone 8 and also my iPhone 10R. My iPad Pro is kind of middle of the line. It doesn't seem like much of a difference from iOS 12, which I guess could be looked at as a good thing, but I was hoping to get even better battery life on my iPad Pro. But overall, I would say battery life in general on iOS 13 is really good and beta four should only make battery life get better. Now, when it comes to connectivity, we're talking about LTE and Wi-Fi. iOS 13 beta four should also fix that any kind of issues you were having with with connectivity because of the new modem firmware update. Me personally, I've not had any issues with LTE signal or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything like that. It's been super solid for me when I do use my iPhone 10R as my daily driver. When I swap my SIM over from my 10S Max to my 10R, I do not have any issues whatsoever. So now I know a lot of you guys are probably asking, should you update to beta four? I know a lot of people probably have like PTSD from installing iOS 13 beta three and it was just a nightmare until the re-release. So you don't want that to happen again. So should you install beta four. And with me personally, beta four is usually when I start loading up the betas on my daily driver. And given how great this build seems so far in terms of performance, it's too early for battery life, but for performance and the 3D touch coming back and things like that, I'm definitely going to be loading this up on my daily driver, my iPhone 10s max today. Now I say that, but I would probably still recommend most of you to wait for public beta three to be released either later this week or next week. It is going to be the same build number most likely as the developer beta here, but just to prevent a another you know beta 3 incident where there had to be a re-release i would just hold off and wait for public beta 3. that way you just get the most stable build and you also give it time for other people to be the guinea pigs for you so you don't have any kind of major issues on your main phone now i know a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about ipad os as well and the ipad is pretty much the exact same as the iphone when i talk about the changes and features and things like that i will say that performance has been in and out here it's been really good on some betas and really just okay on other betas but beta 3 was actually fine for me on the iPad Pro here. Beta four so far seems just about like beta three. It doesn't seem like a huge improvement in terms of performance, but I have not used this as much as the iPhone just yet. So I will be talking about the iPad a lot more in my follow-up video, which will be coming later this week or next week. So if you are interested
interested in the iPad stuff, just stay tuned to that video because most of the time I just cover iPhones because obviously most of you guys have iPhones versus iPads. But anyways, if you guys found any other features or changes here in iOS 13 beta 4, definitely let me know down in a comment below. I will cover a lot of those in my follow-up video as well. And also, you know, run a poll here on the channel in the community tab to see how this software is running for you. So make sure you guys do partake in those polls over on the community tab. I will post that up later on this week or early next week. But anyways, let me know down in a comment below how iOS 13 beta 4 is running for you. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe so you don't miss my follow up video and all the future betas of iOS 13. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.